Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again. I'm going to be talking about some politics, and in particular, the Trump impeachment trial. So this circus started, um, I think January 16th and ended February 5th. And it was, I think, the third impeachment trial of a president. From the beginning, I've done a couple other podcasts, you could see. And I followed the inquiry, the hearing. So Trump was impeached. And on February 5th, they voted and they acquitted him. 52 Republicans voted against the charge of abuse of power. And all 53 voted against the charge of obstruction of Congress. Now, from the beginning... Politics suck, tedious, or a little less tedious now that I did enough research and understand the foundation of this American bullshit politics, being that I live in Brooklyn, New York, I have no choice. But to get an informed opinion, follow everything, and then try to brush up on it, it's, it's pretty shitty. However... We have a clown as a president. I believe this guy has so many things wrong with him. And the government on both sides are just a corrupt bunch of idiots. The theme I've been going with is the Democrats bring a better case, argued it better, and the Republicans are treating it like it's nothing, it's bullshit, you have no grounds. And as soon as it got to the trial, they knew they had the numbers and they were just going to acquit him. Now, on certain days, they seem to have made some adjustments to these he, uh, this trial. Uh, they voted to um, not allow witnesses. And the whole lie smear campaign on both sides is pretty much garbage. However, again, I'll say... The Democrats came with two, what they deemed important charges. And from the beginning, I was kind of a shocked that there weren't a numerous amount of charges. And that they didn't try to get them on a lot of other things. Because we know this guy is guilty of so much crap. There's so, much, there's so many facts out there that it becomes ridiculous even arguing with Trump supporters anymore. Except for the honest ones who say, hey, this is my president. I got to deal with it. Let's be positive. Yes, he lies. He's a shitty human being. So on and so forth. But I do see the other side, the hysterics. And it just, it's a weird time in America. In my age, I guess. Maybe this has happened. You know, people who are much older than me. This might be... Just something that comes around all the time in cycles. Um, and some of the bullshit that goes on, the media is horrible. You're never really getting a good angle on things. You have to do at least somewhat research or at least have trusted sources that you can go to for unbiased opinion. So you got two huge sides of politics on... Democrats, Republicans, left or right, whatever, however you want to uh, label this garbage. And when I sit back and I look at the things that happen in the stages, um, you know, they go on holiday, they come back, and it just the words that they use in their press conferences or interviews, uh, I can go over all the bullshit McConnell says and the hypocrisy, the lies. You got special people who came, like Parmas, fitting things together, supporting the Democrats' case. But when I look at it and I go, okay, you've got a president who you've accused of all these things. You had the Mueller report. You have all these facts that you know about. You only come with these charges. And in the process of getting here, there was no 
teeth. There was no, okay, well, you're not going to testify. Well, we're going to subpoena you, go to court. All those major things didn't happen. It's almost as if they knew that they just wanted to impeach him and move this forward before elections. If that's a savvy political thing, so be it. But I look at it like these two parties, this whole system is so corrupt that the things the Democrats and Republicans want to argue and fight about would, would implicate them both. That's why there's some hints and little jabs the Republicans took about what Hillary did and um, the Obama administration. And I think if they both came clean, pulled the curtains back, you'd see just how disgustingly corrupt everybody is. And we're talking from Pelosi, Schumer, all these greedy, money-hungry people. You got the religious fanatics. It, it just... It's a game system. So the Democrats came with these charges as legit as I think they were. We're going to get thrown out anyway. They parade this um, half-assed trial, in my opinion. Now, granted, I agree with them, and I agree with the principles of it. But it just shows me that all this steel dossier stuff and all the looking into, and the Republicans were hinting at it, there's a ring of truth to it. So I don't think any of these sides have any moral high ground. Yes, if you want to examine this idiot we have as a president and his buffoonery, I think Trump supporters have to acknowledge them and stop being blind, willfully ignorant. You got people who say things in certain threads, you see them all over. And then when someone counters it with uh, some facts, it's, oh, you know, not everybody's perfect, this and that. But your whole argument was about his morals and how great he is for the country. If you want to tell me he stepped over the line in North Korea and he made us safer, I'm going to give you props. So there you go. But when someone brings up something about all the sexual charges, his lawsuits against him, uh, the way he uses strategies that are meant to divide and foster this bullshit, you should own up to it. So to me, the trial was a farce from denying certain things from happening. You can't bring witnesses. You know, it is played out a little weird. You have so many implications from the hearing and the inquiry with some of these people on the Republican side are actually tied to this. And the blatant lies like, oh, Republicans weren't allowed to do this or um, in these other stages, which was just outright lies. Because the Republicans who were in on the committees were allowed to go get evidence, call witnesses, do whatever they wanted to do. But the mainstream media doesn't give a shit. So you, you, they'll be able to just say this and not get pushback on it, except for some real deal journalist and independent media outlets. And even them, you want to be skeptical, skeptical of. We all have our biases. But I didn't see any real good benefit of this for the Democrats. So he's impeached. That's fine. That's for life. That's on his record. Uh, he's acquitted. He'll serve out the remaining term. We got the elections coming up. How does this look like it's affecting everything? So I see things going forward could have been, you could have had a fresh thought, but they just don't give up on this Russiagate nonsense. And I'm not saying there's not countries and organizations trying to hack us and infiltrate us. We're, we're doing the same to them. We have coups going on all over the world. So, yes, there are truths to some of these things, but it, it starts to border on propaganda and fear-mongering in a way. This whole vote blue no matter who, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. There's repetitive cheating going on with the DNC and 
all these states, the machinations behind the scenes to get Bernie out again, Tulsi Gabbard, changing things with Bloomberg. I mean, this is just fucking it's ridiculous now. I have almost no tolerance for it no more. I've done my inquiry on certain social media outlets and engaged here and there. But my thought process was like, I don't agree with you, but have a better argument. Because if I can just look at what you wrote, write a sentence or two, and then you respond with personal attacks and uh, questioning my intelligence and resorting to religious uh, accusations of Democrats being possessed by Satan. I just, I just don't, I won't tolerate it no more. It's just why bother engaging? If someone's asking me, look, uh, well, sh they show me numbers or facts about economy or something. I'm not going to change the subject and attack Trump's um, sexual harassment claims. So there are things like that you see all over the place. And again, I'm going to lean on the Democratic or left side of this because I don't agree with Trump on almost anything nowadays. Maybe when he started, you can say he had strategies that were to the left of people who he was running against in his own party. And they're all just lies now. And they're proven lies, not bullshit spin little narratives on uh, manipulating media. So not only do we have this impeachment trial, we've got the garbage still going on with DNC, all the infighting. How does this look for the elections? I still see, from my small circle, my small little window of life, uh, I still see the mindset of like, this isn't, it's just, who gives a fuck? I mean, in a time when you want people to really go, okay, look, we, you know, we got to get Trump out. You look online and you see people just supporting the worst Democratic uh, candidates, buying their bullshit, their rhetoric, their lies, all these candidates walking back things, and people you love and family you trust are just blindly supporting them because it is, uh, tribalism, blue no matter who thing. Got to get Trump out. Well, this whole time he should have been attacking his policies. He's been rolling back his uh, uh, ties to Saudi Arabia. You have a whole list. And if you really dig deep, yeah, you might find out Biden's son is corrupt and Biden was corrupt and all these little back and forth, there's some truth in them, in these accusations. And like I said before, I think if you just exposed everything, you just see how shitty this whole system is. Corrupt to the core. You have a couple of, in my opinion, rays of hope. And I haven't done many politic, uh, political podcasts, but I still see Bernie, Tulsi, and Yang as... Somewhat of a uh, uh, game changer. Like they're radical enough in their own way to make changes. Long lasting changes. But I'm not naive enough not to go. This is going to have a uh, cause and effect. Um, issue here because just like with Bush, we got eight years of Obama. We're going to get. Uh, bounce back effect we're gonna get you know I think Trump is here as a reflection of America he's president got to deal with it this is what happens when he does his policies this is what happens when he opens his mouth you we voted this guy in I didn't vote for him but I'll say we as the uh, people uh, citizen I just it's just tiring it doesn't seem helpful. There's no victory laps, I feel, are um, justified by any side on this. And I'll say again, though, Trump should, should have been taken out of office. I agree with the 
premise, the principles of their argument on the Democratic side. The right didn't treat it right. And if you exposed everything, you would find out that it just doesn't matter. It doesn't have a consequence when everything is game so much. So looking forward, I still think we need a game changer. We need someone who's a little radical. You might get Bernie Sanders and you might see a, a shift in uh, the spending and get free college, free Medicare for all. And there might be adjustments need to be made in the next establishment. Uh, but I think that'll be a good thing. I think right now we need a good support for the capitalism uh, that has made America great, so to speak. And now it's a little bit uh, off balance and someone like Bernie might work better. Tulsi, same way. Although she has more of a scale back the uh, military empire. At the same time, she has the same type of thoughts and policies that Bernie would have. Yang has some interesting ideas. And I think looking at it, I, I see this impeachment as hurting all of them to a certain extent, but not so much Bernie. I think he's a uh, you know, a political rock star to some extent. Although I think if I had my choice, I would choose Tulsi over him. However, there's no denying his movement, the numbers. Uh, you can mess with the polls all you want. But if you think you're going to keep sharing and fucking uh, backing someone like Pete Buttigieg or whatever his name is, and Elizabeth Warren and Bloomberg, you're hurting the cause. There's no way people are going to settle for corrupt, greedy politicians. I think that's what got us Trump, who we wanted Hillary. I pull no punches talking about the garbage on both sides, so I have no qualm saying that she's a corrupt, uh, a dangerous political agent. Uh, she's done some heinous things. She's been found to be a liar, corrupt herself, and the ties with her husband. And he, although Obama might be a good statesman, he's had his flaws and they've covered up the torture in the past, all these wars. So I'm going to say that the impeachment trial, the whole span of this crusade will eventually be a negative, not as much as the Republicans would like. And maybe from the Democratic point of view, it's a necessary evil. I think it's a cop-out. I think it's a half-assed attempt to try to get a president out. You give him, you're, you're increasing his budgets for military control. You're uh, reaffirming these uh, uh, spying on our own people type policies and extending them, giving the president a power that you're claiming he's dangerous with. And it doesn't work well with me. I don't sit well with this logic, so I don't see this thing looking like, oh, you know, Pelosi's justified in ripping up the speech, and Trump is justified with not shaking a hand. Uh, I don't give a shit. They're both the fucking same. Except Trump is um, more the focal point of uh, not giving a shit about how blatant he is about fucking people over. You have to look deep to find uh, Pelosi's nonsense and her voting against certain laws, keeping Medicare for all out, rigging the DNC. I mean, yeah, I understand where, you know, I have friends and loved ones who are directly impacted by this buffoon to some extent or another. And my heart goes out to them. I don't share the same uh, venom and anger. Like, I wouldn't be the type to say, if you voted for Trump, you're not a friend no more, I'm going to unfriend you, or whatever. But if you argue like an idiot, I'm going to embarrass you and ridicule your bullshit. And if you take that offensive and you're disrespected, well, fuck off. 
right? I'm not going to unfriend you and get mad at you for your views. But if I call to question something you say, you know, stop being a snowflake. You want to keep promoting this president and bringing up and twisting the bullshit narrative to uh, support some view that Fox News fucking supports. And cause I see it every day. You see the same bullshit that uh, a right wing organization is putting out and it's immediately repeated on social media. So I don't see a real gain for anybody. Although I'm politically naive, uh, I've only recently become informed on this whole thing. I spent most of my life not giving a shit. I've discussed this in other podcasts. I'll take a couple of weeks during the year, sometimes a little longer, and, you know, decide who I'm going to vote for, who aligns with me. And now I don't care this time. So I, I hope there's a movement that catches on that might clean cleanse this uh bernie could do it um his policies are really hitting with middle and lower class america is a powerful movement uh momentum behind him i don't see that with many of the others although i wish there was more momentum with someone like tulsi or yang I just see a, not a real win-win here. I don't see the um, Republicans suffering too much from this, as shitty as that sounds. I think Trump's going to just gonna keep carrying on. Although there could be a fucking, uh, so many mental issues going on with this president that I could see him bullshitting his way out of not running again. You know, some fucking made up story and his bullshit lies and that whole fucking speech. <laughs> this is gonna go on until election. I just I wish there was a cleansing event. We get a um like the Iowa victories could have been a um clear indication, but of course that's screwed up and there's all these conspiracies now. And it looks like an obvious smear for Bernie. It gets ridiculous. And I guess this whole thing it could be summed up in a way. I don't like what's going on. And I'm not happy. Even though I don't like Trump. I wish I can grow a list to defend him. Because I've tried. Uh, I might be able to pick two or three things that are legit um, benefits to this country. But overall, it just doesn't work for me. I'd like to see a movement clearly establish itself. Get behind Bernie. Get behind Tulsi. Get behind Yang. And I mean the whole DNC. The Look, swallow the medicine. There needs to be change. Get over it already. I, I see this phrase going around. I don't know if it's, it's resonating more with me, but it's... The Dems would rather see Trump win than Bernie. Because of this progressive, fucking corrupt fight going on. And you got uh, the establishment trying to keep everything the same. And... Uh, dreamers and um, radical ideas trying to uh, build momentum and it just seems to be crushed like every cycle it's and that's why I don't give Pelosi a pass or any of these assholes and I guess that's it I'm not the uh, intrepid reporter going into all these um Incidents one by one, the exact things the Republicans did during the hearing and how they fucking clearly stonewalled everything from the beginning with the president not letting people fucking testify and pushing his weight around and obvious obstruction in areas. All right, fine. This is the game you're playing. You know, it just seems fucking stupid to me. I don't 
really I don't see the benefit to anybody here so I'm hoping right now Bernie and Tulsi can ride a wave and somehow bring change although as it gets closer I will have an open mind and I'll once again dive in figure out what's going on and try to wrap my brain around it and make a better informed opinion on who would be my vote who I would vote for and how corrupt and fucked up this whole system is with the DNC and who the nominee is going to be so that should be fun thank you for joining me I now have um, a Patreon, a PayPal link. Uh, I'm starting a Teespring uh, merch store, which should be links in the description now. Like and subscribe, and thank you all for bearing with me. I know how fun politics could be. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time.